Hey there, so in this video I'm going to be showing you guys some tips and tricks on using the lasso tool to be faster and just stay in the lines and generally make it easier to color, so check it out. Alright, welcome everyone. My name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist and the instructor at O1ArtSchool.com. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. So we're just going to jump right in here because I know how much you guys love long intros on YouTube. So uh, what I have here is a cover from uh, Evil Monkey Man. I don't know which issue this is or if it's going to be the trade or, or what, but uh, this is by Nicholas Seals, and uh, I've done a couple of these covers on the, on the channel. He doesn't even ask any, uh, or wait for me to ask anymore. He just sends them and says, hey, yeah, you can put this on your YouTube channel. And so uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to zoom up on this little area here. If you're rendering with a lasso, and what I mean by that, like doing kind of a cut and grad, I guess, style method, kind of a traditional comic book coloring method, relatively traditional, then let's say I want to throw some of this yellow light onto her face over here, then, you know, I can just select that area, you know, with the with the lasso tool and maybe get some of this down here. Now I've got to be careful not to go outside the lines. Then I can hold shift, of course, to add to this selection here. And if I accidentally do something crazy that I don't want, then of course I can undo, or I can alt, hold down alt and remove sections. As long as I'm holding down alt, I can remove sections and then put it back. And then I can just switch to uh, you know a brush of some kind and, and, and throw that up there and it, it looks pretty cool. What if I want to make like a second pass here and I, I want to add some more highlights maybe on this thing and I have to go in and be careful about selecting this again along the edge and I am a sucker for efficiency. You know, like I want to as few strokes as possible as quickly as possible. So something maybe like this, but again, I've got to kind of be careful about um, making sure that I'm staying inside the lines, which is pretty core to uh, what a colorist does. Instead of having to actively try to stay in the lines, there's a couple of cool little cheats you can do in Photoshop. And the first one is, um, I, I did a video on a long time ago, uh, and I think it's called uh, the selection trick. I, I think I've linked it in many, many comments. But basically, if I wanted to, you know, color this, this character here, then I could Go in with my magic wand first and just select all the areas that's you know going to be a part of uh, the selection that I'm coloring there. And I have an action that actually does two steps at one time, but I'll, I'll do them separately first to show you. So the first is control J while it's selected, and you'll see a new layer come up over here. And if I show you just the layer by itself, it's just the contents of that selection on a new layer. And that doesn't really do anything for us, but if you click this little checkerboard box over here, that's the alpha lock. I don't know. I, don't, I can't remember what Photoshop calls it, to be honest. What is it called? Trans, a lock transparent pixels. Uh, Procreate calls it alpha lock. Those two things in conjunction mean that now I can't color outside of those lines. Okay. And what this is really doing is it's taking... All the pixels that are transparent on this layer, which is everything except what I selected, and lock them down so that I can't paint on it. Okay, so this is a huge time saver. And now what I've done is taken those two steps and combined them into one button and only one one key click. And I did that with actions. And just real quick, I'm going to show you guys how this works. So I'm going to go into my actions window, and if you don't have it, you can just go to window and then actions. And uh, you make sure that your uh, whatever your group of actions is, is selected there. You would just hit uh, new to create a new one. Now before I do this is an important thing you need to know. You need to make your selection first before doing this particular trick here. Uh, because whenever you hit record to record those steps, you need to have the piece in the same position it's going to be in, uh, in the same state, I guess. Um, before you start recording because when I hit this button what I want it to do is copy to a new layer and lock the transparency so I'm gonna make sure my selection is already selected okay then I'm just gonna click new and we'll call this selection trick and hit record and now I'm gonna do those steps so I'm gonna do control or command J 
and then I'm going to click that uh, transparency lock. Now I'm done. So I can stop this uh, recording that's happening. So what the action did is it recorded what I did. Okay. And so just to preview you guys that this works. So if I go in here and I'm going to set this to, what am I going to set it to? I'm going to set it to shift and F4. Okay. You just double click the action to, to do that. And so now I'm going to remove this layer, uh, make my selection again. And this time I'm just going to hit shift F4. And now you can see that it's added that new layer and it's locked the transparency. So I can immediately start working on this, right? Pretty cool. I already have this selected as a as an action, so I'm going to delete what I just did. Now, uh, the other thing you can do, and you can actually use this in conjunction with uh, this method if you want and do both, but the other thing you can do is uh, use a clipping mask. And I don't know, I mean, I've talked about clipping mask a few times, but so on this piece, I actually already have on this front guy here, this headless guy, there's a green layer. It's just a green layer with nothing else on it. Uh, it's a little transparent uh, to separate this guy from, from the rest of the crowd back here. So everything else has kind of got a bluish kind of tinge to it. And then this is green in the front. And I don't know if that's going to stay that color, but probably so. And so anytime you have a, uh, let's say you have an object like this and on the layer by itself, you know, this is what it looks like. So if I wanted to paint on that character right here in the front or the, the head of this character right here in the front, then I'm going to make a new layer on top. And if you hold down Alt or Option in between these two layers, can you see that little arrow thing that pops up? I'll try to blow this up when I'm editing this. This is a reminder to myself. And uh, we see that when you hold down Alt or Option, and you put your mouse over that transition, that little space between layer two and five here. If you if you click that while that little arrow is showing up, then it will clip layer five, in this case, to what's in layer two. So now on layer five, without using any selections at all, you guys probably see where this is going, now it all is contained to that particular layer. So the way you could do this, and this is kind of a weird scenario with this thing right in front, and another option you might have is to separate your foreground characters from the background. And I actually have a uh, like a little selection down here at the bottom that has a couple of planes uh, split up here already. So if I if I select all of that, and I'm just going to do that by holding uh, Control or Command and clicking on the picture of that layer, you can see that it selects basically all the people in this shot. Now I could use this with a trick that I did before which was, in my case, just run that action. So now, all of these characters are on their own little layer. So I can make layers above this, hold down Alter Option, and clip that uh, rendering layer to that uh, new layer with just them on it. And what that means is, now I can render in all these places without having to worry about going outside those lines. So this is a huge time saver to keep you from having to trace the same lines over and over and over. And that's one of the most common questions I probably get on this channel is how do I get faster? This is one thing that will legitimately uh, make you uh, even faster. So, and you can repeat, have multiple clipping masks. So let's say for example, on, on this particular layer, I set it to multiply and this becomes you know my shadow layer. Okay, so I've got some shadows in here. Well, let's say that I want to make a different layer for my highlights. So I can just make a new layer, same thing, clip it down again, and we'll set this to something like screen. And you see it's brightening it up in those areas. So again, huge time saver. It's a really easy way to stay in the lines very easily, which is a concept in coloring that's not probably discussed enough on YouTube. So anyway, this has been a real quick video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, be sure to check the links in the description, subscribe, thumbs up, ring the bell, all that stuff. But I do have my coloring courses. I've got a free pro tips guide down there. I've got a free beginner lesson in the description. So there's lots of cool stuff. Be sure to check it out and hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care.